Hello, what's happening? Uh, no, I, I was sort of you, that's okay. Um, can we interact with the police that you need um, Wayne to be back in the squad? Uh, well, yeah, I, you know, Alan Wynn is a great player. He's He was our captain for this tour. And, you know, we want the best players here. Um, he comes with a massive amount of experience. This is this is his fourth tour. He's a, you know, he's, he's a great player, um, great person to have around. So I think he still has a couple things. I think Gat said he still has a couple things to do um, to make sure he gets back. But if he's, if he's fit, if he's healthy, then it'll be great to have him around. Would be a, a remarkable comeback, wouldn't it? Did, did you guys think he was out? He was all out? Uh, well, I think initially everyone thought he was he was out. I think he thought himself that he was out. But um, you know, all things could happen with with, uh, with 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 hard work, preparation, and 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 dedication. And you know, he has that in abundance. So if he's if he's able to come out, um, let him get on a plane. I'm sure. I'm sure. The Lions were sorting out one nice private jet, or a nice private jet that he will just fly quickly or straight over to Cape Town. So, um, yeah, if that could happen, that would be great. And is he one of those players that, that on and off the field, that, that he's a boost, he's, he's a presence in the camp? Is that fair to say? Um, well, Josh has probably spent a bit more time with him um, in, in rugby environments than I, than I have, so he's probably the best to answer. But... From my point of view, he comes with a wealth of experience. He has, you know, he has a great mental attitude, and you know, he's if if he's here, he, it can it can only help our cause. I will ask Josh about Adam in, in a second. Mara, just uh, finally from me to you, um, did you watch the football last night as a group? I did, yes. And uh, how was it? Well, obviously, um, incredibly proud of of the England football team. They their performances from the the start of the tournament to the end, you know, they they grew and grew and grew, and you know, football and the England football team especially has a remarkable ability to bring the country together, bring um, different people from different walks of life. Um, you know, is is Nelson Mandela famously said that sport has the power to to change people's lives sport has the power to unite people and you know i think the england football team they they took an essence of that um so obviously we're incredibly disappointed and sad for 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 the team that they weren't able to do it it came down to penalties sometimes penalties can be a flick of a coin but you know incredibly proud of of them incredibly proud of the boys that stepped up to take those penalties um you know it's i think the the man in the arena deserves deserves the credit so um my well wishes are to to those guys in particular and some of the players have received racist abuse on, on social media you obviously that's not what we want to see and, and can I just get your reaction to that and, and perhaps what social media is doing in terms of cutting down and kicking this issue out yeah it's um it's appalling to be honest it's appalling i think quite frankly the behavior of a uh, fraction of the fans f throughout the day was wasn't wasn't very good from what we from what i was picking up from over here in south africa from people storming the stadium through people you know the the behavior before before the game was wasn't wasn't great and it only got worse after the game i was speaking to one of my friends and I actually said that um, the the behaviour before the game wasn't good, but if England lose this game, is is gonna get worse. And um, it's it's a shame that a fraction of fans literally spoiled the occasion for for everybody else. The, there's a large proportion of fans that went to Wembley who bought their ticket, who 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 are great football fans and and did their piece, um, but they were ruined by. A large amount of people who were racially abusing some of some of the black players that were there, some of those brave individuals that took up to take those penalties. So, you know, you know, I it's it's just incredibly sad, sad to hear, sad to see. Um, it's it's sad that we we even have to have this conversation in twenty twenty one, and this is the reason. This is a large amount of the reason why so much talk is done 
of, is is about racism in, in in sport because these incidents in, incidences happen on a on a on a on a semi regular basis, which is which is not what anyone wants to see. No, it's not what anyone wants to hear. And you know, you know, is is it's become it's become cliche to say this, but you know we need to do more we need to do more to tackle it we need to do more to get these type of people out of out of the stadium we need to do more to tackle this type of football culture that ruins it for a large amount of people um you know the england football team inspired inspired the nation inspired people all across the globe i had people in in nigeria singing it's, it's coming home um so they inspired so 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 many people so for them, for that to be tarnished by some of the behaviour, some of the abuse that we've seen, I think is, you know, it's it's very disappointing. All right, thank you. Uh, and just final one from me, it's to Josh. Uh, good, good to see you, Josh. Get, uh, get, uh, just a word from you on Alan Winning and the news that he might be joining up. You obviously, as Mary says, you know him better than anyone. Yeah, um, obviously he's a, he's a big personality on and off the field. Um, if there's someone who could do it and get back out here quickly, it's him. So fingers crossed, he does all the protocols and um, hopefully he can get himself out here. I'm sure um, he will recover well and hopefully he's, he's um, strong and fit when he comes back out here. But um, on the pitch, as a pack leader, he's he's one that leads from the front and he does say he does talk a lot, but he can just lead from the front. Thank you. I'll let someone else pick up. Josh, it's Andrew McKenna from, from Southport Radio. I'm sure you've probably seen the South Africa A-team you're going to be playing against. It's not really an A-team, is it? Let's be honest. Is this effectively the fourth test match? <laughs> um, yeah, it could be. Um, I haven't seen the team, but I've yeah, they've gone fully loaded. So uh, we just take it as another test, really, and, and get on with it. Like They're going to go pretty strong, and they probably need to get a game time in, um, which you're looking for. And... All we can do is prep as we have been, and um, it'll be a good game on Wednesday. Um, speaking of their game time, Razi Erasmus has said in his press conference this lunchtime that he would like South Africa A to replace the Stormers on Saturday so that they get two runs out against you. How do you feel about that? And bear in mind the Sharks did that for you to help you get ready. Do you almost have to uh, say yes to that to, uh, to, to be good at the, you know, return the phone book? Well, um, the tour schedule has been put out and obviously we're meant to be playing Springbok A um, at the, well, on Wednesday, but we're obviously playing probably the main side and um, obviously Stormers on Saturday. So it'd be nice to actually get a chance to run against the Stormers. It might be a little bit unfair then, but some of their boys would be in hyped for the game as well, the Stormers boys. How are the forwards feeling? Um, because you've done a, a decent amount of work so far. Obviously, the backs have had issues in the fact that they've had to go 6 2 split and sort of go a bit light on the bench. How are the forwards feeling as a group? Yeah, we're good. We're fresh. Um, we've had a, a lot of changes the last, well, every game, so it's good having the, the strength and numbers really. and. Um, well, there's obviously a new pack out this week and yeah, looking forward to it on Wednesday. Maro, if I could just come to you for a couple now. Um, first and foremost, uh, how are you? Because obviously you had to miss the other night with a bug. Is, is that now all cleared up? How, how bad was it? Um, yeah, it wasn't too pretty. <laughs> it wasn't too pretty. I um, I don't really like, you know, it takes a lot for me to um, miss a game. So it wasn't too pretty but you know we thank god that i'm here smiling and healthy and so i'm speaking to my lovely friends in the media <laughs> um, just your thoughts on that um, south africa race side i mean it, it is absolutely fully loaded i mean th this is going to be by far the, the hardest w workout that you've had so far on tour uh, yeah you as you said you're right um that's the reason why we've we've come to south africa to to play to play the world champions to play to play South Africa's um, best players, and to be honest, this is brilliant prep for us because we've the games we've had so far they've been good games and we've taken a lot from them. But this is this is going to be a step up in terms of the intensity of the game, in terms of the physicality, in terms of the energy, and for us this is you know I I don't think you could ask for better preparation going into the test. So it's um it's brilliant. And just finally for me. I think I'm right saying you actually sent Bakaya Sacco a tweet 
um, after uh, yesterday evening's game. Did you feel compelled to send that, given all the bad stuff that's been knocking around on, on social media? Um, like, you know, I'm a, I'm an Arsenal fan, um, as some of you may know, so I've I've seen Saka's rise to, to prominence, especially over the course of this season. And he's a, he's a phenomenal player. Um, and watching him represent England, I know this it will be pretty special for him, pretty special for for everyone who knows him closely. So um, I was when he missed the penalty, and I saw his reaction thereafter. Um, I just felt so so sad for him. He's he's a young he's a young man. He's nineteen years old. He's he's gonna play for England for for many 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 years to come, so you know he's he's a great player. And I just think as as sports fans, as as football fans, as people, you know these that he's the type of person that you need to support. And you know truly and honestly, um, again I was speaking to one of my friends, and as soon as he missed, I I knew what was what was coming. I knew that there was gonna be an outrage on on social media and you know you know as as you know athletes you can you can it's not nice but you can take um heat when it comes up when it's about your performance but when it's out when it's about things that are personal when it's about things like race things that are like completely out of your control um you know i just think that's unacceptable so um, yeah, just sending loads of support, support and, and love to Bukayo Saka. Thank you, Hi, uh, can I get a couple of questions with Josh, please? Um, hi, Josh, it's Katie here from, from Wales Online. Just wanted to ask your, you know, whether you've spoken or had any contact with Justin Tipperich at all, really. Did you have any advice um, and, and, and how is he doing, do you know? No, I um, obviously sent him a message um, when I hit well, when I got the phone call, um, hearing about his injury and stuff, and then, luckily enough, we were um, lucky to catch up with them too in um, Edinburgh when we landed off the plane. So it was nice to see them too, and obviously for them boys, is bitterly disappointed watching the game, seeing them go off. I didn't think too much of um, tips. I thought it was just a HIA or something like that. Um, and Alan Wynn never comes off, um, very rarely. So. I was a bit worried on that case, but obviously um, with the boys, it's, it's, it's hard to see when it's two Welsh boys coming and you're swapping over, but um, it's it's hard to take them boys, but it's, it was nice to see them just before coming into camp. Good. And so you, you went from a North Wales training camp with Wales then to, to head into South Africa in, in quite a short space of time, but that was very different. Yeah, it was it was well, it was a crazy probably forty eight hours. Um, getting the bag pack and obviously getting the phone call, getting the bag pack, and then ending up down at um, Exeter to fly up to Edinburgh and then straight out to South Africa that night. So it was a crazy forty eight hours, and until I laid in my bed in South Africa, I was, that's when it hit and came home. And can you tell us a bit about the call then? What, what, you know, what were you doing at that? Um, I was doing a bit of work on the car and I showered up and then I had a, uh, a text from uh, Alan Phillips saying ring me ASAP so I kind of knew what was coming but it weren't 100% so gone to, well, I called him back and then he said um, I said are oh, you right, mate and then he goes oh no as happy you're going to be and he said oh yeah <laughs> you're coming out yeah obviously with the injuries to the boys and um to be honest, I went straight next door, um, told my parents and, and told my girlfriend and uh, everything went fast and thick then. And a huge amount of opposition in the back row then. Do you think um, you could maybe tell us what you think your point of difference is and also your, your rivals as well? What, what are their best qualities, do you think? Um, is the, it shows to the back row that the the quality's there. Um, it's just nice to play with different boys and get a feel for boys who you always play against, and um, it's it's really enjoyable. It's always it's going to be uh, it's going to be a close call, obviously, with everyone. But yeah, just I'm just enjoying my time out here at the minute and uh, taking every moment in. Great, thank you, and good luck both.